Where's Fielder? He's gone to the dogs. Welcome once again to the Gone to the Dogs podcast. This is your host, Steve Fielder. Man, do we have a star-studded lineup for the podcast today. I call it the Triple S Threat. We've got Smith, Strickland, and Sizemore in the house today. <laughs> hey, guys. How's everybody doing? Good. I like that that uh, triple deal there. I like that. That triple threat. S. Tip, triple threat. Yeah. Th- that <laughs> is the voice of John Strickland from the great state of Kentucky. Randy Smith, how are you today? Uh, I couldn't be any better, buddy. Thank you for asking. Well, I, uh, I'm i still full from being up at your place and eating those steaks and seafood and open-air breakfast. Oh, my gosh. Well, we got to – go ahead, John. Frog legs and call it seafood? Is that what y'all do up there? <laughs> Just wondering. Yeah, yeah, that's it. That's it. Oh, man, this guy put on the feed bag now, I'm telling you. Well, we've got a new voice here, and I haven't spoken to this fella on a podcast before, but uh, I got a feeling everybody knows his name now, and uh, if they don't, they certainly will. Josh Sizemore. How are you, Josh? I'm doing good. Doing good. Well, you're in some pretty fast company here today, bud, but uh, we'll try. <laughs> We're trying something new here on this podcast, folks. I've got all these guys on a conference call, so we'll probably be running over each other a little bit as a conversation picks up, but that's all right. I mean, it's all about fun. It's all about a good time. And speaking of a good time, these guys, especially Josh, uh, last weekend had a great time at the uh, Pro Sport $100,000 to the winner hunt. What was the overall purse on that hunt, somebody? Do you know? Two, two, uh, like 240 I believe, after paid the cast wins. $240,000. Who would have ever thunk you could make that kind of money hunting coon dogs? Did you? John, you've been around this thing a long time on the competition side, and Randy has too. Did you ever think we'd get to this point? You know, Steve, I was I pushed my, myself and Tim Kramer pushed uh, PKC way back for the first thousand dollar entry, ten thousand dollar first place um, hunt, and and they didn't think it would they didn't think it would go, they didn't think it would fill, and they chose not to do it. So we did it as an invitational down in Walterboro, South Carolina. A gentleman named Ed Altman, aka Pig Eye. Oh, won yeah. He won he won ten thousand, but he, he didn't have any faith in his dog, so the thousand dollars he he sold me and Kramer, so we all <laughs> paid three thirty three a piece. We won thirty five hundred. His wife got mad when he went and talked to him for three days because he said he didn't give her a chance to get in. But uh, that was the first good one, you know, the big one that that uh we had ever. Yeah. What about you, Smith? Did you uh, do you ever imagine we'd get to this point? Um, not really. <laughs> <laughs> not really. <laughs> no, not really. But it's uh, it's quite the ride now. It's been a couple really interesting months here, a few months for us. Uh, John won a truck with Lady, and now Josh does this, and I don't know how you can top this. This has uh, been incredible. Well, it is incredible, and and I'm just I want to stop the tape. Not actually stop the tape, but uh, just jump in here and say how thankful I am that you guys would all come on to my podcast and talk about this phenomenal win and this partnership that you have and and all that that entails. It's just such a great, great story and such a a positive uh, thing for the sport of coon hunting going forward, and I'm just really glad to be able to share it with my listeners. Josh, you are the man that made the calls, that that was out there for two hours, that uh, handled Lone Pine Bella to this $100,000 win, uh, have you come down from the clouds yet? Oh, we're already we're we're looking for the next one. That's what as soon as I get off this call, we're going. We're starting back tonight and and you know getting ready 
uh, getting ready for the next one. I told Randy, I said that that's not the last check that we're going to cash with this little female. So, so I've got to uh, I've got to keep her keep her in shape. <laughs> well, it looks like you definitely had her operating there. I watched the pro sport uh, coverage there, and and kudos to. Scott Engel, I thought he did a great job. The normal cameraman, Greg Maynard, had his hands full calling his dog. But uh, I really enjoyed that. I Have you guys got to, to look at the film yet? Is that what you called the display of handling that Greg did that night, calling uh, your dog? Oh, <laughs> I, well, I'm... <laughs> Poor Greg. <laughs> Greg's my buddy. Cut it. He's my buddy, too. That's why I'm telling him like it is. He'll call me later. <laughs> Oh, when great. he did make a mistake, I I didn't I never have got to see the the play by play video yet. Well, Greg I, was born a mistake. Well, <laughs> <laughs> well yeah. now those guys, I tell you what, now with Levi, I don't know Levi. I don't think I've ever personally met Levi, but I know Scotty and, and Greg from way back. You know, I've judged them. I've been on casts with them, world hunt, final casts, and hunted with Greg several times back in my PKC days. Always a fun time. But, uh, yeah, that, this pro sport thing's pretty salty, man. It's going it's going well. What do you guys think? I think it's by far the best set of rules. Uh, by far the best set of rules and the most professional and the most honest and ethical hunt that, that we've had so far to date, honestly. Uh, hunt series, in other words. I yeah. think I think knocked it out of the park. Randy, what do you think? I, I think it's the best, best uh, you know, organization going for competition cone hunting. I've been on several of the casts, and and it, it the, the guys are all professionals, and the Generally, the right dog wins a cast, and I have yet to hear any kind of a bickering or anything in any of it. And uh, the, the the best part of it is, I think that the small core group of the guys running the show there have the call to make whether they have somebody that's stirring up trouble or whatever, and they can just pull the plug on it right then and there. And all the handlers know that, which that's that keeps things in check. I think it's fantastic. <laughs> Well, you know, having had my hand in three different registries over the years and running hunts and so forth, of course, uh, man, I tell you, this thing has just taken off. I feel like I'm back here in a Piper Cub and you guys are on 747, you know, compared uh, comparatively speaking. But from where I sit out here in the cheap seats, I think that they're doing a great job with it. And, and I agree with what you're saying. Now, of course, the registry into things is something they really are not into. Uh, I guess, do you even have to register a dog with Pro Sport? You, you do. Uh, oh, okay. You do. And they're, and they're actually growing that side of it as we speak, and, and they want to okay. get better, and, and they're striving to get better. But the biggest deal, one of the biggest game changers in this this series or events is, is the cast stays together, Steve. I mean, man, yeah. it, it's so simple. We've been hunting for years and years and years, and, and nobody's ever really thought of that. All of a sudden, cast stays together, and it eliminates all the questions. There, there's just yep. very few questions, you yeah. know? Exactly. And I sure like the way they have the panel there in the woods. You know, when uh, when uh, uh, Jason questioned that tree call on uh, Molly's, uh, is it Molly? Is that the female's name? Greg's yeah, female? Yes. Yeah. You know, there, well, bring the panel over here. Let them look at it, you know. Uh, I don't know if that's all according to, to Hoyle on all that, you know, because I don't know the rules that well. I've never hunted in one, but uh, seems like, you know, I, we were always about at PKC and all putting out the brush fire, you know, out the little fires before they become a bonfire, you know. And I, I just think that that way of looking at it works, don't you? You, you think about the process of, of the of the question that we have typically today in that process, you don't have a panel there. 
you got four guys and they all have different ideas of what happened. And then their friend calls them on the way back to the clubhouse and gives them a new idea <laughs> and a new way to go about it and a new way of writing it up. And then their other friend draws it on paper, how to explain it. And by the time they get to that panel, that panel's got to sit there and listen to all these different people. And, and you would be amazed that the panels I've sat on and thought, were they even on the same cast? Exactly. Uh, when them panel members are out there listening, buddy, the rubber meets the road. It's over with. The panel heard it, and you ain't got to explain nothing. I yeah. questioned it. Okay, boom. You don't even ask the other other hunters. There, there's nothing to ask. It's over. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Yeah, yep. absolutely, because I remember back in the day at PKC, you know, we had implemented the idea of having a staff member uh, uh, listen to all the questions that were uh, at the table. Of course, I'm talking like typically at the World Hunt or Super Stakes, so that if there was an appeal, and Larry Meeks used to call it, he said, well, I just want to throw $100 on the table to get three more opinions, you know. But anyway, if there was an appeal, then, you you know, the, the stories couldn't change because Roy had been sitting, standing there listening to what the guy said on the panel, and then when it gets to the appeal, sometimes those stories change, you know, so... Yeah. Isn't this a great way to eliminate the appeal? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. Well, let, let's talk. Uh, I want to get uh, Josh into this conversation a little bit about, uh, and I guess this is uh, Randy. I know that as we look back, John, you and Randy formed a partnership on the Lady Female. That, And I've had uh, – you on a podcast to talk about that, I believe. Have we? Have we talked about that on on a podcast? I know we we talked. We did. Yeah, and and then uh, along comes Bella. Well, let me let Randy uh, talk about that. What what was the process in your uh, from your side of things, Randy, about needing a handler on Bella? Well, uh, Gordy Gordy Drenek. Uh, train Bella and he works away from home all week, every week. So the only time that, uh, he could, he could hunt would be maybe Thursday night, but Friday and Saturday night. And his family hadn't, had, doesn't get to see him all week. And it just, it turned into just more than that, than he could, he could handle, you know, as far as wanting to go to a hunt. And, and he knew that, Bella deserved to be going to bigger hunts that, that he just couldn't swing. So, uh, I just talked to John and, and we had, uh, already sent bank to, to Josh's and jo and bank got sick and passed on us. And so Josh was waiting. And whenever the time come up, he, he took Bella and, that's it. I mean, it's yep. just been like they say, the rest is history. You know, he's made history with her already and hasn't had her very long. So that's right. Well, Josh, let's <laughs> introduce the the you to the audience Steve, a little bit. Steve, yeah, go ahead, Steve, John. Jump before in. Before we go anywhere, Randy don't realize the difficult task of hand combing all the the handlers qualified in the world and hand picking this special guy for this and matching the dog with the, <laughs> you know i'm playing go ahead josh <laughs> oh my gosh <laughs> well i figured there was a strickland embellishment in that story yes, somewhere yes. <laughs> so, yes. somewhere well I've, I've got i did recording this week with a, a, a fellow in tennessee and, and this the podcast is going to be a hoot because it's about Cass Walker. And I don't know if you guys remember Cass Walker or not, but he used to run ads on coonhounds in the, in full cry. And he was a real colorful guy. And he had, he had a, a uh, gimmick for everything. So John, I, I think uh, I'm comfortable with that. <laughs> <laughs> with, the, with the way you operate. <laughs> but no, Josh, let's, I, I want the audience to know who Josh Sizemore is. Tell me a little bit about you, where you were born, uh, uh, where you live, when you got into coon hunting. Just a little bio there, if you will. Well, I live, uh, I actually 
don't live too far from John. I live about uh, two hours uh, kind of southeast of John uh, in a town called London, Kentucky. And, uh, and you know, my family, they've been into coon hunting. Uh, my papa and my dad. Uh, so they got me into coon hunting when I was, you know, young. But, you know, as far as doing, like, competitions and stuff, I just, you know, I mean, I went to some local hunts. I mean, there was up here – uh, a few miles from the house that uh, my uh, grandpa was actually a master of hounds there when UKC used a master of hounds. And uh, so I'd go there and, and honestly, it was it was kind of a, a cheap uh, babysitting gig. I guess you could say it. <laughs> uh, you know, parents would pay, you know, twenty dollars for an entry fee and, and they kind of got a babysitter for two hours. Uh and I, you know, and so I never really got in, you know, big into the, to the coon hunting. I mean, I've had dogs and stuff, uh, but really, uh, I really got serious about competition hunting, I guess three years ago. The first big hunt that I ever went to was the, uh, hundred thousand, the first hundred thousand dollar pro sport hunt. Hmm. So, okay. uh, so I've really only been into competition hunting for three years. Uh, that's what, you know, I hear people talk about you know, like all the world hunts and nationals and stuff. And, you know, I've been to super stakes twice, the world hunt twice and the nationals once. And so, uh, you know, I guess I'm kind of a, I guess a late bloomer when it comes to competition coon hunting. So, uh, so yeah, it's just kind of, you know, where it got started. Uh, just a country boy from Kentucky. I got you. I got you. Well, John, how did you and Josh uh, hook up? Um, Judas Bowling, which which now handles a, a dog for me, and well, actually handling a dog for me and Randy right now. He's handling Lady as we speak. Uh, he took her last night. Mm. But Judas and Josh were really good cool, buddies. Right? <laughs> you heard it first, right here, you folks, on first, the Gone to the Dogs <laughs> podcast. All right. <laughs> Anyway, so uh, him and Josh were buddies, you know, and Judas kept saying, man, I, I like this boy. That's a good boy and blah, blah, blah. And then I, and then I actually drew him a couple times and, and uh, you know, he's he, he's a competitor, man. I mean, he, he's out there to win. He, you know, we, we I'll give you what kind of competitor he is. So we're, we're at a restaurant about, <laughs> I don't know, six or eight months ago. It, it, it's a really nice, nice restaurant. And. And there was about six of us. And I said, hey, guys, the, the meal's on me. So y'all eat whatever you want. Well, Josh was the first one to order. And they had a special fried lobster tail. The most expensive thing on the menu <laughs> was steak and fried lobster tail. So Josh immediately says, well, if you buy it, I'm taking the fried lobster tail and steak. And I'm like, well, there's a $100 bill. You know, okay, all right, well, I said it. I'm a big boy. I own up. So Josh picks his food down, and then we go draw that night, and he goes deaf on me. I wanted to kill him. I'm like, dude, I am going to choke your butt with that lobster tail if you don't hear that dog sitting through here and blah, blah, blah. But that's the kind of competitor he is. He's there to win. I mean, I can't, I can't knock him. He, he's there. He's I tell you, it's no holds barred when you're out there in the yeah, dark, right, yeah. Josh? That's right. <laughs> Well, you're you're having to hunt with one of the best, absolutely best. Hey, you know, I got a compliment the other day, and it was kind of an offhanded compliment. <laughs> I had said, John, that I thought you were the greatest competition mind in the game today, and I sincerely meant that. But right. do you know who quoted me? On a pro sport, Maynard. 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 He I done said, it look two or three here. times. Yeah. I said, look here. I'm getting quoted. Of course, he didn't give me credit for saying it. No, but he the said quote was somewhere there. else. Somewhere <laughs> else, he said, "Is Steve Fielder says the greatest uh, so and so, well, I, and I, I believe it also." He actually said that somewhere. Awesome, I don't know where I read that. Awesome. Well, that's I, I'm not one to blow a lot of smoke, guys. So you know, <laughs> if I say something like that, I mean it. And I, well, I know, I you know, I've got the trifecta here. Uh, I've got a, a, a world-class professional breeder of Trim Walker Coonhounds. No doubt you about that it. Right. Of course, no doubt. And and uh, you know, I began to realize this back in in 2016 when I first started talking 
uh, some with Randy and with his partner Tom and and the different ones and Rick Strauser and all those guys. And so I think the whole Coonhound world knows what I think of Randy Smith and Lone Pine Tree and Walker Dogs. But anyway, we got the breeding end of it here. We got the handling end of it here. And apparently now we've got another handler on top of that. So you guys are, are a pretty formidable team and uh, a truck and, uh, and a 100K hunt uh, here pretty much back to back. We also... Hey, we also got lady in the fifty thousand dollar hunt. The there was a fifty thousand dollar purse and then a hundred. We also got in the final four of the fifty thousand dollar hunt too. With the with lady, yeah, yeah, that's yes. awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, Randy, let's talk uh, a little bit about these dogs. I mean. Um, of course, in case the listeners have been under a rock or something for the last few days, Lone Pine Bella won the hundred thousand dollar hunt in a in a, a just a dominating fashion. Scored six fifty plus, no minus. I think maybe didn't she maybe catch a coon or something? She didn't get to score, or I don't know. She did. But yeah, yeah. She caught a coon. I cut her loose, and she caught a coon. 50 feet from where I cut her loose at. We, I mean, we watched the coon, and they was, you know, I, I tried handling her to get her recut, and they went back and forth, and and I didn't. I said, well, I'm not going to argue with them, so we just went on. But, uh, but yeah, she did. She on and After her first tree, she caught, she caught a coon on the ground. Mm-hmm. Well, I knew Bella when she was a puppy and Randy sent me a picture of her and I thought she was one of the prettiest tree and walker pups I'd seen. You remember that, Randy? Yeah, well, I think I, I think you were here when she was about six months old. We took a picture yeah. together with her, I think. That's right, we did. Yeah, and I think then, so. then I came up last year and we took, uh, well, Troy, your son, went with us. Mm-hmm. We took Bertha and we took Belle, Bella. The two mm-hmm. dogs we had, and uh, she just put on a show that night too. And you know, when when I come up there to hunt with you, Randy, we always hunt the dogs independently. I've noticed that we rarely ever turn two t- loose together. Uh, but Bella showed me right then that she's a coon trier. And uh, what do you say about that, Josh? Well, uh, yeah, I mean, I tell everybody. I said, I mean, she's a. Uh, He's the type of dog that if she parks her feet, there's a coon above her. Uh, I, I tell people, I said, I said when she trees, I said, I'm not worried about that tree now. I said, I'm worried about where, which way I'm going to cut her. I said, I'm worried about the next tree. I said, because I know she's got a coon at this tree. I said, I don't have I said, that over with. I said, there's a coon in that tree. I said, so now I'm looking to where I can put her, the tree, that next coon. And it's just, uh, and it's, it's, she's the same way, pleasure hunting. Uh, I mean, just... When you unsnap her, she's got she's got one thing on her mind, and she's you know it's just tree and coons, and it's just uh, I mean it's just cra- you know I've hunted you know I ain't hunted a lot of dogs I've had two you know pretty nice dogs that I mean they would tree coons but just nothing no, I mean you know you hear people say all the time well you know I've got to hunt mine this time of year or I got to look and take mine to this hunt you know I feel like that it don't matter what condition or or what part of the country or whatever you know when i unsnap her she's going to tree a coon every time she parks her feet well john have you hunted with her i have uh i actually drew her in the late round of the world hunt and then i then we pleasure hunted and you know um everything randy touches is has got gold on its toes. I mean, it's just hard to believe. You know, he he knows what it takes. That that line of dogs is coon tree and dogs. Obviously, they're independent. They got to meet when you get in there. They're not real trashy. You know, uh, I, I mean, if you look back at the line of dogs, it, it, they're they're all the right kind. They just maybe they hadn't had the breaks or they hadn't been in the in the hands of the the guy that would take them to the the more exclusive hunts or or maybe not had time to, but. But the the line of dogs is where it's at. I mean, all these dogs you hunt with all of them. They're all like the same. I mean, they're like cookie cutter. They're they're yeah. just a real deal. Well, I found that, and you know, I I've been in this registry game and in this coonhound game, and now pretty much in the public of coonhound sports. 
you know, for 30 some years, nearly 40 now, I guess. And, and, you know, I, I try to be, keep things, uh, in perspective and not, you know, try to blow things up too much. But when I started going up to, to hunt with you, Randy, I began to see that everything we flipped out there, it didn't matter what you drug out of the kennel and <laughs> flipped out there, it was going to be a couturier. I mean, we sat in that little, poor little old side by side he's got up there. I think he's got, well, the last time I was up, I think he said he had yours up there or something, John. But anyway, we uh, hand me down. It was is it called a hand me down. Yeah, he, he got he upgraded, Steve. He upgraded. Is what I'm telling. I you. got you. But we'd sit there and watch those dogs on the drive track, and I said, "Man, those dogs not only are hunting, they're hunting where the coons should be." And then when they get they're getting treed, they've got the meat. You know that this is phenomenal. And I think our buddy uh, 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 Mr. Stark there that was up last week or a couple weeks when I was up there, and I think you've done some more uh, recording with him, Randy. You know he was very impressed with that. That you know there's seven or eight females there. Turn them <laughs> loose, and the one's just as good as the next, if not better. And at Randy, you when you bred Bella, what were you thinking when you made that cross, that litter? Well, I, I would have uh, extremely good luck with using Bone Collector in the past. So I got I bought a few breedings from Doug Compton whenever they were still available, and uh, that was the that's the first you no know, the second one. I think that I used that I bought off a of dog. I think I have two more left, but I used that on Fran, <clears throat> and um, I believe that was the first time that I bred Fran. I used to, used the bone semen, and um, I I had a pretty good feeling that they would be what the other ones had been like that I that the, that I had used out of bone, and and uh, I had, some of the best ones that I've had were out of him, and. Um, they're just balanced and they got good mouths and yeah, you know, I heard different things about mixed results that guys had from him, but I had nothing but good results from using bone collector. Well, you know, I enjoyed hunting with the lady female and she was the first dog that you turned loose when I came up there for the first time to hunt with you. Mm -hmm. And I liked her from the start. We hunted her that night and we hunted shot. Your quick shot female that night. Yeah, well, we hunted Fran. You said lady, but we we hunted. Did Fran I say lady? Oh, yeah. I, I, no, no, yeah. I, I misspoke. I meant Fran. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, we right, right, and she was really balanced. Had a super mouth. Uh, she hunted real hard. She was a fast track dog and had a coon. Uh, maybe you know Bella has one almost every time, and Fran was just another you know, percentage point down below that. She wasn't quite as accurate as what Bella is, but real close. Now, she was kind of, um, tell me a little bit about Fran's breeding. Fran was out of Tree, tree Slam and Frankie and uh, Lone Pine Track Girl that I, I got in the final four of the UKC World Hunt in 2011. Yeah. And uh, it was a really good litter. Free Slam and Frankie was a good dog to breed to also. Well, it it all starts in the breeding pen, you know, and uh, this is kind of funny, Ellen. I was talking about it when I'm titled this podcast. Who am I, how am I going to list these names? Is it Smith, Strickland, and Sizemore? Is it Sizemore, Smith, and Strickland? Is it Strickland? <laughs> And I said, Josh is the guy that was out there, did all the work. <laughs> He's the one that finished the deal. But and, and Ella says, yeah, but Randy, if he hadn't have bred the dog, she wouldn't have been. So, John, you had to fit in there in the middle on that discussion. I, I, believe, I believe Gordy did most of the work, to tell you the truth. Yeah. Gordy, Gordy did a really, really good job with Ella. He, he hunted yeah. her right every time he hunted her. And corrected her when she needed it, and uh, he did a great job with her. She, yeah. She's she's well adjusted. 
Well, guys, listen, when you plan to go to an event of this magnitude, I mean, $6,500 is pretty salty as an entry fee. So you got to kind of know what you're packing, as the old guys would say, before you go in that deep, don't you? Anybody got a comment on that? You do. And and I told Randy, you know, Randy called me a couple of times and, and, uh, you know, I left home Monday. I mean, I I never, when I left my house Monday, I went to Judas's and uh, somebody asked me Sunday, said, you said, what are you going to do now? I said, I'm going home. I said, I ain't been home in a week. Uh, But I, you know, Randy called me a couple of times and, and, uh, and I told him, I said, I said, I'll be bad disappointed if I'm not in the final three. And uh, I went up and hunted with Judas Monday night. Uh, we started out. She treed, uh, I think, two dens. And I kind of got on to her on that second den and told her that this ain't this right here is not going to win hunts. And uh, and she treed me five singles, you know, after that. And uh, and then I, I went and uh, – I went to, uh, instead of coming back home, I went actually to Shelbyville, Kentucky. I've got some hunting in Shelbyville, Kentucky. I went there. I left Judas's, went to Shelbyville, got me a motel room and hunted uh, Tuesday night at uh, Shelbyville. And then, uh, uh, you know, just stayed, just stayed going. I said, well, I said, I'm going to get her, you know, used to just being on the road and, and being away from home. So I just, uh, I did. I mean, I, so, I mean, it's just, it comes down to confidence. You got to have a little bit of, you know, confidence in your dog. Cause if, you know, if you go out there and you think you're beat before you get there, then, you know, you've, you've already lost. Well, as you're talking there, the word commitment comes up yeah, to me and from all three of you guys, you know, you got to be committed to this thing The in order to get this kind of return for your effort for and all you got to really be serious about this game don't you anybody want to grab that one yeah i would say you if you don't you're just going to get left by the by the side because there's a bunch of guys out there's committed and and when and you got to be you got to be just to commit as committed or a little more i would like to ask josh a question at what point in this game josh in the last couple weeks did you get unscared of hunting by yourself at night because <laughs> supposedly oh. Judas says you're scared of the dark you won't hunt by yourself I just want to know where that fell into this whole you and Bella deal because obviously she had to like protect you at some point you realize hey I'm safe well, just wonder I'm going to tell you this I can promise you one thing when I go to this woods my phone is fully charged and I would hate for someone to try to scare me because I usually have a gun somewhere on me and I would have someone to jump out behind a tree and try to scare me because it would be hey, bad. Hey, Steve, he had a he bought a bicycle one time, an electric bike, and we were laughing at him. And I said, Josh, what in the heck are you going to do with that, you know that bicycle? Now he says, Hey, now I got away with somebody or something gets after me, I can get the heck away from them. <laughs> I noticed Murphy had a picture the other day. He was selling his truck, and he had a bi- electric bike on the back of it. I just wonder if that's a new thing in in night hunting. But but what do you do with your dog? You just run off and leave your dog? What's the deal? <laughs> she runs beside me. I, I mean, this one, I don't have one now. I'm actually fixing to purchase me one. That's a... Uh, I'm going to purchase me another one, but uh, they just uh, they run, you know, you just go about 15 miles per hour and it's actually a good you know exercising thing too you know i mean I people run up in meals and, you know i've got quite a bit of land here around me my family does and you know so i can take that bicycle if i'm because i mean i don't hunt a whole lot through the week and so i figured you know i can take that bicycle and you know run her for 30 minutes at you know 15 miles per hour and it's uh you can keep yeah. her in shape yeah, yeah. Well, she looked like she was in shape the other night. Well, John, you notice how he evaded that scared of the dark thing there, kind hey, of sidestepped I, I'm, that, didn't one he? One thing, and I, I don't care to tell anybody, <laughs> I hate the dark. I promise you that. And then that's one thing I can say about uh, K Light. They, they last a long time because when I'm by myself, <laughs> I return. 
<laughs> well, I'm with you on that, Josh. That's what I wear. Of course, I couldn't be, you know, I, I'm not a very good uh, spokesperson for any kind of light because I don't use it enough. I told people before if they came and knocked on my door and said, uh, are you a coon hunter? And I'd have to surrender my card and say, no, I had to turn it in. But, well, no, I tell you, so you guys kind of got a thing going here. What's the plans for the future with these dogs? We got, okay, who's on, uh, who's in the stable right now as far as uh, hounds that you guys are? Well, you got Bella and, and, uh, and you got Lady. Is there others in this in this partnership, or is that it? What we got, Randy? Tell him. Tell him. Well, I I got secrets. Oh, okay. <laughs> Some things I, not to be not to be revealed. I, I yet, told huh? John. I've been telling John. I got other ones, and when you're ready, you just let me know. So that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Steve, he won't even let me know, Fielder. He won't even let me know what he's got. You know, I I don't even get the taste. I don't get the sample. I, well, I don't understand I, really. Uh, Randy and I've become pretty good friends, and he he looks after the old guy, and he keeps he'll he'll Facetime me at night and say, "Hey, you want to go coon hunting?" And I'm sitting on the couch wishing that I was, and he will go. And I'll, lo and behold, I'm like, well, "What's that dog?" Oh, that's so and so. Well, <laughs> you know, where'd that one come from? <laughs> you know, so he doesn't tell me everything either. I mean, he keeps it close to the vest. For sure. I promise she does. <laughs> well, we know, uh, Randy, we've mentioned this before, and this is something that you said when you breed to these stud dogs like Bone Collector and Frankie and the other, all the others, that you hope that the puppies will turn out like their mothers. And uh, I think that's basically what goes by this, this line of females is kind of the taproot for for all all this success has been that that line of females, isn't it? Well, I always looked at it like this: if I wasn't if I wasn't completely satisfied to have a dog just like their mother, you shouldn't breed her to begin with. That this stuff of you know, I mean, you always hope for little adjustments and improvements in that, but you better be totally satisfied with the with the mama to begin with. If you're not then they're probably not breeding stock, you know. So all these females that they that I've used through the years have all, what I say, make the grade. You know, they, they're, they're totally balanced, easy to get along with, and, you know, hard-hunting females. And uh, it, it's worked out, you know. It's just, and I try to, try to keep them bred to the best dogs that I can. And, you know, some crosses are dynamite and sometimes they're not but the, through through recent years here we've had extremely good success well for sure you have and john uh looking at you you've kind of gone on the female bandwagon too and of course you did an awful lot of winning with your page female now am i right does she have puppies now yeah, she's got nine little baby z pups uh they're about two weeks old now boy yeah. they she's a She's an excellent mother. They're fat and just, I mean, great. just incredible That's little great. puppies. But, but, you know, talking about the females, I've, I've always typically, you know, in the hunts I've hunted, you, you're talking about habit and, and country and and uh, clutch of mayhem and Clayton mayhem and, and all these dogs, you know, Triple Creek Rat. We won the world mm-hmm. hunt with the Nationals and Walker Days. And I, I've always kind of been a person that's been partial to – to male dogs, you know, Apollo yeah. won Automote with and Grand National Champ and all, and, and the, the male dogs always, you know, they're they're like stouter looking, and they're louder and they're flashier and they're, you know, it's just I've always been kind of drawn to male dogs and and I get a hold of a page and I get a hold of a lady and and I look back. And I'm like, you know what? You talk. I talk to myself all the time. I I love to go hunt just me and the dog, <laughs> and I lay my head back on the side of that can am, really with my eyes closed, and listen to that dog. Every breath that dog barks, I, I listen and and record it. But by the same token, I talk to myself, which sounds crazy, but I do. But I'm sitting there like after a while, and 
And I'm like, you know, you're you're a fool if you think back over the years, the few females that I've hunted, like Salt Creek Jenny and a yeah, ton yeah. of mayhem, you know, and, and uh, uh, Swift Creek Ann, you know, uh, yeah. and Kramer's Cracker, you know, and Swift Creek Lace. I've won on a more consistent basis with females than I ever did males, even though I've won more with males but i'm talking about consistently yeah you know without a lot of hassle and and i've told you can ask judas and jeff rickliffe i told him i said hey bud uh i'm just telling y'all we go into females i'm not I, I i don't foresee john strickland ever buying and and i i might be wrong two weeks from now but i'm just telling you i don't foresee john strickland ever buying or hunting or being interested in hunting another male dog in the hunts to haul up and down the road in the hunts. I, I just don't see it. I'm, I'm a female guy and Randy, I mean, Randy kind of, I mean, I guess he's, he's put that in me. And if he's had any influence of all at all over John Strickland, I'm telling you, Randy Smith has put, Hey, females, females, females in these hunts. Right. And, mm-hmm. and I just can't see, you know, we just sold Apollo and it, it, he's a, they, yeah. nothing wrong. He's, per, he's an amazing dog. I mean, as good as you'll ever hook a dog lead in. And and I just said, hey, Judas, I'm not. We're gonna we're gonna put you on female. You know, we're gonna hunt females. So, well, that's my he, take on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and Randy, on that end, as far as the hunting end of things, males versus female, what made you go that route to begin with? Because well, you've had Tom, stud dogs before. I, I've had a I've had a couple, uh, but. Whenever I first started with Tom Strang and I become partners, the first dog we had together was a female out of Logan's Clover and Lone Pine Chris that uh, Tom had there. And, um, well, he, he had, she was born at his place, Terry Marth had her. But anyway, we just, from then on in, we had a male now and again. But uh, whenever we had a female, we could choose and do anything we wanted with her if you have a male dog you're begging people to come and breed to him so if you want to really establish a line of dogs the females are the way to go <laughs> i mean uh you know horse breeders and all will tell you that the female has more influence than the male dog does for the most part every once in a while you'll find a dominant male dog but uh i just prefer hunting females i can change directions on what i want to do with them you know every six months so when you have a male dog there like i said you're you're at the mercy of who wants to bring a female to him so the breeders concentrate on females and that's what i do well josh what do you think about hunting a female is this the first one that you've uh, you've walked behind or, or have you had, it is. had them uh, before well, I mean, I mean, I've had females, you know. I mean, but uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, I'm kind of like John. I mean, and and you look at the dogs that, you know, that got me into where I'm at now. You know, I mean, uh, we had Punch, and I mean, he was a phenomenal dog, and and uh, I think would have been a, uh, you know, would have probably been a good stud dog with his mouth and, you know, his ability and stuff of what he done. Uh, you know, unfortunately, he got, you know he got uh, killed uh and then you know then we i had the jed dog that uh got second uh saturday night so uh so yeah i mean i've been more of a you know my whole life uh even before i started competition hunting you know i've always had male dogs so uh you know and then they you know they sent me bank and and i tell people you know i really liked him uh, you know, he, he fit my style of hunting and, you know, would fly around and stuff. And then, uh, you know, Bella come available and, uh, and, you know, I started hunting her and, it, you know, kind of like John said, it opened my eyes to like, you know, man, this is, uh, you know, this, this is a whole different ball game. And it's easier. Yeah. <laughs> it's easier. Well, they're less nonsense, you know, yeah, except for that easier. heat period a couple of times a year. You know, they're just easier to work with, easier to train, easier to live with, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, Randy, uh, 
Oh, and I don't know where I want to go here. I got so much talent here at my disposal here, and I promised you guys I wouldn't keep you all night. And I know that Josh uh, wants to get to the woods, but this is just such a good opportunity. Uh, John, tell me just a little bit about the sale of Apollo, man. That that's got to be be big news um, in the Coonhound uh, uh, world. Yeah, we, William Keeling. Um, he's the new owner of Coon Dog Wear. Uh, they call him BK. Um, he he uh, he bought Coon Dog Wear, and and uh, he's out kind of promoting that. And he he wanted a, you know, he wanted the right kind of dog, and and the and Apollo. I mean, he's a household name. So oh, yeah. He he bought him, and uh, he's gonna he's gonna hunt him some, and and I guess he'll be a he'll be a stud dog. He'll. That dog will reproduce. That, that dog's a power packing easy dog. He's got all the chrome. He's got the mouth. You know, he, he the dog's going to be a big time reproducer. And uh, people hit his his scratch on the competition world. I think is just beginning, honestly. Um, but it, it's going to be really cool to see what Willie what what BK does with him from this point on. And really good guy. Lives out That's what I've country. heard. I haven't met him myself, but someone was telling me the other day what a great guy he is and really enjoyed uh, visiting with him and so forth. And, you know, talking about Apollo being out of that cross of, uh, of uh, Power Pack and She's So Easy, Easy was out of track, man, wasn't she? Uh, yeah. Easy was out of track man and, and a bad habit female. Yeah, so it kind of yeah. all run back together. And there you, you know? go. And, you know, and that was something that I've kind of, you know, Randy can can join in on this, is, you know, when I asked him about track man, you know, and he said, I always, didn't you tell me, Randy, you always got good results when you bred to, pack, uh, to track man. Very good. And the females were great reproducers. Yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot of females out of track man and different lines of dogs that use in pedigree. There's a the females seem to really be uh, good reproducers out of track man. So uh, he's he was he was good for me. He was, he was good. Well, without uh, revealing any secrets, then I know that you've got one out of him right now that uh, I think people will. We'll know her in time, but I won't get into that unless you want to. <laughs> uh, she's she's making the right kind, I think. Yeah. What did you see? Huh? What did you see? What did I see out of her? Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Yeah, I saw that she can get in there. She can move a track. She's got a good mouth. She's action-packed. She's Miss Tree Dog, and she has... And when I walked into the tree, she had coons over her head. So I don't know. Yeah. What, I don't know what else. Yep. To, that was to a, say. that was a really really good cross between Track Man and Jilly in there. There's a lot of guys hunting them right now that are really liking them. So it looks oh, yeah. good. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And on that line, whenever whenever Bella's time is up, I've already made arrangements for her first breeding. How old is Bella now? Bella's four, so it won't be for. It's not going to be right away here. But I've already I, yeah. I made a made the decision and made the deal the other night. There, I'm going to uh, breed her to Big D whenever her first her first for her first breeding. Big D semen. Yeah, you're going to try to get some barking in there, ain't you, buddy? Oh. They'll so be Steve, fine. Folks, so now Steve listen Rent, in. Rent. Listen in, guys. Hey. you got a conversation between uh, – this is the Coonhound Brain Trust right here, and it's so, live and it's on the air, so <laughs> listen up closely. <laughs> so Steve, so Randy, you know, he's, he's, he's northern and he's polite. And he's a gentleman no matter where you're at. And, you know, us southerners are a little bit different sometimes, and we talk when we should probably listen. So – so Randy's dogs, he expects them to act like that, you know, and and uh, I've got lady, I need her to bark more, so I'm riding down the road, and I'm blowing the coon squall out the truck, and I'm shooting the gun, and I'm hooping and hollering, and and, and I got her barking everywhere you go in the back of the truck, just whoa, 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 so, 
So Randy calls me and I'm going out on a cast. He goes, what in the world is she doing? I'm like, what do you mean? What's she doing? He goes, what's she, what's she doing? This is the Oklahoma truck hunt. I'm like, she's barking. He goes, well, holler at her. I said, heck no. I've been working on that for weeks, blowing coon squalls and shooting guns out the window and dragging oh. dead coons across the dog box. He goes, oh my God, you're ruining my dog already. You're ruining her already. <laughs> and then you go and win a truck with her, right? <laughs> no manners. He says she has no manners anymore. Oh my! <laughs> All he, that work. He asked, uh, I do have one request from Randy. If he does, if if this does continue, and he he you know trains me another one, if he would uh, put a handle on one for me, because this is the hardest dog to catch I've ever seen <laughs> after the hunt. And <laughs> it, so I, I would request a handle. That's that's talk, called talk desire. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Josh, Josh, what do you think you get paid for, bud? You got to do something, okay? Come on. Hey, all I told him, uh, you heard when Scott asked me, I said all I'd done was got her in shape and took her to town. That was my job. The stuff it is on is on them. I said they do all the training. I said all I'd done was got her in shape and took her to town. You bet. Yeah. Well, that's a great yeah. segue, Josh, into talking to you about that final cast. I just kind of want to uh, climb inside your head there for a minute and let you share with my listeners what that final cast was like for you. If you want to take me step by step or just hit the high spots, however you want to do it, but I think that they would really like to know from a handler standpoint how that cast went. Uh, it was just, uh, you know, I mean, like I said, I was nervous, uh, you know, I think I called Randy on the way to the club, and I said, "Man, the nerves are finally hitting." And uh, and then you know we get out there, and and Bella's pretty good about striking for a hundred. Uh, Hold mean, on a second, Josh. What I tell you whenever you said you was nervous? I, I don't remember. Trust me. I mean, well, I'll uh, I'll, rem I'll remind you, I, I, brother. You've already won this. This this thing is over. Yeah. And you, when, I, I just. I felt whenever he got that far like that, that th this was, it, it was done for. I, I I just had a feeling and it was, it was great, but go ahead, Josh. But, uh, so yeah, you know, I tell him that, uh, you know, we, and, and, you know, Bella's pretty good about striking for a hundred. Uh, <clears throat> she's not automatic, but, <clears throat> but I've been pretty fortunate to get, to get, you know, a hundred strike with her, uh, about every time I cut her loose. So, uh, so, you know, we cut loose and I'm sitting there watching my watch and I've kind of got a thing in my mind that, you know, I've got a certain time on that watch that if she continues to bark through that time that, you know, I'm going to strike her. And and she did. And, and I go back and I rewatch the live videos and stuff. And and, uh, you know, she she had her first coon treat. And like I think I figured it was like two minutes and 45 seconds. She treats her first coon for 100 and 100. So, uh so, you know, I, you know, I'm feeling pretty good at that. I'm not, I, you know, I got that first one out of the way and, uh, you know, I got, you know, so that, it puts me in the lead and already puts them in, you know, catch up mode. So, uh, so I get off that tree and I, you know, I said, I walk a minute and Jed's treed and, and I cut her and, and she goes over here in these big old high weeds and she just kind of like a, like a rabbit dog, you know, you cut a rabbit dog loose and they go to hunt and like in a thicket right in front of you. And I'm like, what in the crap are you doing? Like, you know, I just wanted to go over there and kick her because, I mean, she just, she never does. I mean, most time when I cut her, she's gone. And so I'm like, what are you doing? And by that time, like, I'm sitting there watching her. And by the time she just stops and looks down and grabs a coon and, and kills it. And uh, and I've never, you know, I, I'm not big on killing coons. And especially this time of year and stuff where, you know, coons are having their kittens. I just, I don't, I mean, that was the first coon that Bella's had since she's been at my house. So, you know, I mean, so then you get thinking all that stuff like, you know, man, is, is she going to, you know, is she going to drop it? Is, you know, this, I mean, uh, cause punch, I mean, he would lay there and chew on a coon and, and until the hunt was over. So, you know, then you have <laughs> those emotions going through your mind, but, uh, but we backed off of her and, and she did drop it and go on and, and, uh, and she's been having a little bit of downtime on me in between the first tree and the second tree, but she done a good job. She went in there and I don't know, probably 
13 minutes, 14 minutes or something, you know, she trees her, uh, you know, second coon, maybe been a little bit longer. So, uh, so yeah, but you know, I mean, it's, uh, I don't know. I'm not good about talking about like the cast and stuff. I'm breaking oh, that's it all down. Right. You don't have to just, just what feels good to you. Uh, so, you know, I mean, then, you know, Jed, he trees a coon, you know, Molly, she trees a coon, she, you know, and then, uh, you know, I'm I'm big. I can on, on pro sport. I mean, it's all about staying staying in order. You know, if you get you know you tree that first coon, you know you want to have that second coon tree fairly quick because you know if you get out of order and you give this dog time to tree a coon and get recut, and you know you give it time to to tree another coon, then now you know before you know it, you're playing catch up. And uh, and with the the you know the dogs that we hunt against i mean you know if you're if you're having to play catch up or whatever i mean it's just uh it's really <laughs> really hard to uh to get that lead back so uh so you know uh jason's dog trees a coon uh molly trees one gets recut and you know and trees another one uh you know in between and i think you know, when Maynard treed his, it wasn't just a short time after I could hear, you know, Bella come treed, you know, way on through the country. And uh, <clears throat> so we go to Maynard, you know, his dog down there, Cooney recuts. And then, you know, then she finally get, you know, she gets in there, uh, you know, where our dogs is across the road, <clears throat> which was kind of an advantage to, for me, because, you know, you start getting, you know, you start walking a mile this way and then, you know, before you know it, you know, if you have to walk a mile back the other way and then you recut yours and she's another mile on in there, you know, that's when you start getting out of hearing and, and, uh, and all that. So it, it actually was a, you know, in my favor, you know, that Maynard's dog went that direction. Uh, so, you know, we get in there and, and, uh, you know, Belle's got, you know, her second coon. So that gives me the lead back. And, uh, and then, you know, we go to, you know, Maynard's dog is, you know, she comes treat as we're going to Bell's second tree. So, you know, she's on her third tree and, uh, you know, we get in there and she's got a, uh, a circle tree mm -hmm. and, uh, and it's, you know, that was kind of like the break I needed to, you know, to put that gap between, you know, me and Greg, uh, because, you know, mine was treated again behind us and, you know, on her third coon. So, you know, I mean, so that, you know, I knew when Greg didn't, you know, have a, you know, a coon in that tree, uh, and, you know, mine was treed, you know, four or 500 yards from us or whatever that, you know, that was going to, that was going to open up the lead between me and him. Uh, and then, you know, we get to her, we score her, we recut and the strike opens back up. And that was the last thing I wanted on this cast because, you know, now, you know, Greg's dog is already loose and she's, you know, she's been hunting for, for five minutes. So, you know, I mean, a lot of times if you cut loose like that, the advantage is for the person that's already, you know, that's already in there hunting. Uh, so it was just fortunate that I, you know, I was able to strike for a hundred again. And, uh, and then, you know, she, she marks and, and I'm, you know, she's right over here, you know, to the left of us and she ends up coming around in front of us and kind of hush. I don't know if she just finally, uh, you know, she just kind of, you know, realized she couldn't tree that coon. She drops it and, you know, she goes just flying down this edge and I'm watching her and, and, uh, and by that time she just falls tree. And, you know, <laughs> I think Ingle made the comment that, you know, he, that's, you know, she, she, you know, he hadn't heard her, you know, do that yet, you know? So, uh, and then I think, you know, Strickland and them, they was on their time management. And Strickland will tell you, when it comes to time management, I'm not your guy because I'm kind of pretty much, I'm I'm all throttle. I don't wait. I don't sit there. I'm not going to sit there for five minutes and all that stuff. And, and I, when they, you know, when they come treat, I'm treating them and I'm going, you know, I'm going to them. Uh, but I, you know, like I said, I'm, I, you know, I'm confident in her, uh, but it was one of them deals too, you know, what was going through my mind is, you know, I've never, you know, just heard her come treed like that. So I'm thinking, I was like, man, you know, uh, I mean, she's, she's good about having a coon, but you know, could they be a possibility, you know, she might've put one in the ground or something and, uh, you know, just run, or, you know, I mean, anything could have happened. So, 
uh, you know, and so that's one reason why I went ahead and treat her. I was like, well, if I get in there and something, something's not right, you know, I've got, instead of having, you know, 18, you know, 15, 18 minutes, I'm going to have, you know, 27 minutes or something, you know, I'm going to save this much time. And, uh, and so, you know, we get in there and, and we're walking and, you know, everybody's, you know, you're always looking to, you know, before you get there and, and Levi tells me, you know, she's, she's got a coon. So, uh, you know, that was, that was kind of one of them, uh, you know, one of the, probably the greatest, greatest feelings when I, you know, I mean, when you know (laughs) that 30 minutes left in this hunt that, you know, there's a, there's a very, you know, I mean, only way that, only way that, you know, we could have lost was her just stand beside me for 15 minutes and, and she's got too much heart to do that. I mean, she's, there's no, there's no quit. And, you know, we hunted, you know, we hunted three rounds out there and I and drove four and a half hours back home on Sunday and, and she's bouncing around her kennel Sunday evening, barking and, and everything in the world, you know, ready to go hunting again. So, uh, so that's, you know, that's pretty yeah, much how yeah. it went. 650. That's pretty, that's pretty awesome. I, I don't remember, uh, a hunt at this level, at this uh, with this kind of payout, with the scores going that high, do you, John? Did we lose John? What did you say again, Steve? Oh, okay. I, didn't hear that. I said I don't recall with with Bella having six fifty there in that for that cast win. I don't recall the scores being quite that high at any of these major. Uh, uh, these hundred thousand dollar hunts, or these? No, t- t- typically they're not. Um, you know, we we've had some scores. I, I think Echo last year run a big score up. If I'm not mistaken. He, the, you know, it's funny you're talking about that final that she just kind of crushed them because Echo uh, last year absolutely just destroyed yeah. them, kind of yeah. the same way. And I mm-hmm. think he had a big score too. Yeah. And yeah. in Lane, I was in. I played second the first year. Lane Levert won it. I was second yeah. with Apollo, and he crushed us too. So with I checkers, guess in the first right? hundred thousand dollar hunt, those those three final casts, they just ever who wins it ends up dominating in the final round because mm-hmm. it's happened three years in a row now. Well, it's uh, you know it's, it's kind of an unquestionable win when you do it that way. You know when you go because you know you're you're hunting against the best of the best at least for that weekend. And uh, well, what uh, guys? I tell you what, we've been at it here for an hour, and it's been great. I uh, I thought I had some more questions for you guys, but I think we've kind of run the gamut. Uh, anybody got anything you want to you want to add out there? Words of wisdom or or, or uh, about the future just, or whatever. All I want to say is, and and I'm not giving. Uh, well, I guess I am giving Randy a, a shout out. If, if hey guys, if you want to if you want to hunt a winner and have a chance, you really need to see what. The long pine stuff is is out there that can be be purchased or be hunted because proof's in the pudding. He's figured it out. He he's got a great line of dogs. He's smart about it. He knows what it takes to win, and uh, and there's going to be a whole lot more winners. I drew a little dog um, at the Michigan the the nationals um, qualifier, a long pine dog, and I looked at the cast and I knew nothing of the dog. But it had long pine, and I don't even remember what dog. Randy might remember what dog it was. Uh, do you remember Randy? No, I don't. But, but anyway, the little Amish boy, uh, or used to be Amish, uh, Willard or or Liam Liam Willard Liam Willard, mm. uh, a little uh, male oh, dog. Two track, two track. Yeah, that's oh, two yeah, track. That, that's a good dog. Well, let me tell you something. I knew, or I felt when I looked at that card, he was on it. So long pine. I said, you know. And I, I told Jordan was wrong with me. I said, let me tell you something. The dog to beat on next cast is that dog. I know nothing about him, but he's got Lone Pine in front of him. He's going to have a coon. And and he got in a little old patch of woods. And I ended up winning the cast. But I, but he got in a patch of woods and absolutely just started operating. It, it was unbelievable. And then and then he just he stopped barking, and, and the two called him, and, the, and I ended up beating him. But mm. but that, that line of dogs, dude, is, I mean, they're, 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 <laughs> If you want to win, you need you need to look at them. They're, they're really something to, to look at. 
I'm Thank glad, you, John. Yeah. John, I got to jump in there just on behalf of my buddy. I have found a good guy uh, to partner with a pup or two down in Virginia. Just a country boy, grew up on a big uh, beef cattle farm. I took him up to Randy's uh, uh, here a couple weeks ago, and but uh, he's just a great guy and he's really not into the competition yet but he got a pup from randy that's out of the cooney valley pack dog of sean burdens and fran the mother of bella he texted me last night he took a boy along hunting that's wanting to handle this dog in some hunts for him and he said he said i cut clyde he swam the clinch river now the clinch river is not just a little brook it's a pretty good sized river he said he swam the clinch river uh treed at 800 uh, got to him he had his coon and he does that on a consistent basis i call him the coon vending machine you know i mean he he's a coon treer so uh, what you're saying there's a lot of truth in it john and and uh i i don't own any stock in lone pine kennels but i sure do like the dogs <laughs> Well, fellas, are we done? But I want to give a, you know, I mean, a big thanks, to, you know, to to John and Randy, you know, both, uh, Steve. I mean, John is kind of, uh, you know, I've kind of looked up to him, and and he's, uh, you know, he's kind of led me in the right direction. You know, anytime I need any help or any advice or anything, you know, I call John. I mean, and uh, and he, you know, he always gives me, you know, the best advice and. Uh, you know, I can't thank, you know, him and Randy enough. You know, Randy, I've never really talked to him. I think I met him, you know, once or twice before this. And, uh, and you know, so, you know, to trust me, you know, and taking this dog and, and you know, he told me to, I t- you know, make my schedule and, and you know, get my reservations and, and tell him where I want to go to. And, uh, you know, for someone to, you know, to just put that much trust in the, you know, in a person to not only, you know, send them a dog that, you know, I mean, is, you know, has got all the sentimental value in the world to Randy, uh, you know, but to trust in me to, you know, to go to these hunts and the same with John. I mean, John, you know, he, he called me and said, Hey, you know, Randy's needing a handler for this, you know, for this hunt. And I mean, he could have called anybody in the, in the world you know, and, and got them and he, you know, he chose me and, you know, I can't, uh, you know, I can't thank them guys enough to be able to, to be out here and, and, uh, and do this. And, you know, I, I got back home today and, or, you know, Sunday and they have a flea market up here, uh, on Tuesdays that, you know, I, a hobby of mine is trading guns and, you know, it was just, you know, people that don't know nothing about coon hunting when, you know, I mean, it was like, you know, everybody down through there was, congratulating me you know hey you know you just won a hundred thousand and you know i owe it to to john and randy you know for that you know for that opportunity to be able to do this and uh you know i could never you know i can you know never repay them for the for you know for what they've done for me well that's well, well said josh and i know yeah. those guys appreciate it for sure well yeah, i appreciate you too but i i wanted to say just a couple more things here these you know, like I told you, you guys about Gordy putting all that time into Bella and Austin Ewing. Uh, I, I handed Lady off to him, and he put a lot of time in her. Rick Strouser is constantly hunting any dog that you know that I need him to hunt. And Kyle Preston, these guys, even though we're not going to <clears throat> that level of hunt very often, I knew that whenever I talked to John and made the deal with Lady that it was going to be a game changer. And he, this is the, the, the main reason why all this is happening is because I got hooked up with John and he, he'll, he, John just don't say nothing. Just don't, don't say anything. And you, that's the truth. And I really (laughs) appreciate the, I appreciate the opportunity that these dogs are getting, you know, getting the opportunity that they deserve to, to win like this. And it's been, it's been like a dream for me, so I, I really appreciate all these, all the guys that are help out, and and uh, it's it's been a, a real blessing to me. Well, well, Randy, I appreciate that, but Suzanne just threw up, so I don't know what happened. Yeah. 
<laughs> John, I got a question for you before we go. Now, you yes, just sir. now said, or on this podcast, you said that Judas has got Lady. Okay. Correct. And Josh here, of course, got Bella. What's John yep. going to hunt? Well, I'm, I have been going, man, and I, I, literally, Steve, since last year, a year ago, I've been going so much. I mean, this my family doesn't ever see me hardly any of the weekends. So, actually, mm. I told Randy and, and, and everybody and, and, you know, Ashley and Doug, my other partners, also, hey, John's taking a break. We're going on like a two-week cruise and – in June, and awesome. then we're going on. Uh, we're going to take our own boats and go from the U.S. over to Bah Bahamian Islands, Bimini, and whatnot in July for like ten days or two weeks. So, I'm actually just going to kind of chill and and relax June and July. I'll be at the, you know, we'll be at the truck hunt. And that don't you know the big black widow hunt we're putting on. But other than that, I'm just going to yeah. try to just relax a little bit, and regear and. And I'm sure, I'm sure we'll, I didn't say Judas was keeping lady. I said Judas was hunting lady right now. Okay. <laughs> so, okay. All right. Well, that's great. That's great. You need a little R&R &R and, and look out, folks, when he comes back. <laughs> He'll be loaded for bear. John, right, I'll, send you, I'll send you my address, John, for a little bit of that Apollo jingle. Okay, buddy? There you go. There you go. Hey, <laughs> yeah. I can tell you what, talking about the way dogs cross. That dog, you know, I, I'm not a, I, I don't believe in breeding a male dog. I, I don't want nothing to do with it, the stud business. But that dog right there would, would really probably reproduce with your, with that line too. I mean, we'll, that, we'll try. It, we'll it, try. It, it it unbelievable, probably. Well, you heard it here, folks. Once again, man, we got all kinds of uh, hot news here. This, <laughs> this episode, <laughs> guys. I'm really it, as you guys are kind of thanking each other and all. I can't thank the three of you enough for coming on this podcast. Uh, this is something I do just to kind of keep my hand in it. And you know, the listeners have been great. They tell us, you know, that we're getting more than anybody else in this Coonhound podcast game. So we're we're happy about that and just really thrilled to have the triple. S threat, however you want to say it, Smith, Strickland, Sizemore. <laughs> Thank you guys for coming on. I really appreciate. It. You got anything closing uh, remarks? Anybody? If not, we'll pull the plug on this thing. Judas is going to change his last name to Strickland so he can be in this. <laughs> Big Jude, I'm so glad he got some good news, health news here not long ago, and I am so glad uh, he is that, the man. That, that he's doing well. You bet. Okay, folks, that's going to do it for the Gone to the Dogs podcast for this episode. Had a great, great uh, time here with John Strickland, Randy Smith, Josh Sizemore. Sorry, Josh. And uh, we'll be right back on here next week if we can find somebody to talk to. If anybody asks you, where's Steve Fielder these days? Say, well, he's following one of those old lone pine dogs. He's gone to the dogs. <laughs>